All right, we have another appliance repair video. This is a toaster that I'm having a problem with. And toasters are fairly inexpensive, but I don't like to throw things away so fast if I can fix them. So we're going to go over this toaster and find out what exactly is wrong with it. And you will also learn how the toaster operates. And in the process of finding out what is wrong with this toaster, you will also learn exactly how to troubleshoot your own toaster in the event you have a problem with yours. Now the problem with this toaster is the heating is not occurring on the inside here and on this side here. So when I push this down, you will see in a minute that one side, I'll darken it, will glow, but yet the middle will not glow. And we're going to disassemble the toaster. We're going to make sure there's no break in the resistive steel wire that's in there. And if there is no break, we're going to check the resistance of that wire just to verify it's okay. And then we're going to go in and then we're going to check out the circuit board and the relay to find out what the issue is. All right, and as you can see, you can see the glowing on that side. And there's glowing on that side, but there's nothing in this rail, and there is nothing in that spot there. So this whole section down the middle is not heating up. Now the first thing you're going to do is unplug the toaster and remove the front and back panel. Every toaster varies how it disassembles, so look at yours carefully before you disassemble it. All right, the cover has been removed, and you could now see a circuit board which controls these two slots right here and another board right here which controls these two slots. Now the operation is pretty straightforward. When you push the lever down, this wedge shaped piece of plastic you see right here will go between these two sets of contacts. When it goes between, it spreads them apart and then they connect. So once you push this down and the contacts close, the circuit will power up and the heating element will come on and at the same time there is an electromagnet which is right down there which will pull this plate right against it like that keeping it down once this has been triggered what will happen is depending on where you set the duration of the heating it'll continue to hold it down with the electromagnet and once the duration has been met the electromagnet will have power removed from it and then it will pop up the contacts will open and then your toast is ready. So that's how it works. Alright, we're going to take a closer look at the circuit board. Now how, this, now how this is going to work, once you push down and the contacts are closed, power will then be allowed to flow into this board. So you will then have 120 volts coming in right here. That's your line and that's your neutral. Now cross the line and the neutral in this case, I have an MOV, a metal oxide varistor. That's there for any spikes in the voltage to help protect the rest of the circuit in front of it. Once you pass the MOV, you then flow through two of these 2 watt resistors in series. Two of these in series will yield 2 watts, 5.4K ohm. Once it passes through the other side of this resistor, it will then be rectified by these four dials at the top. That's a bridge rectifier that was made, a full wave. That DC voltage will then be smoothed by this filter capacitor. Now once it leaves this capacitor, you see over here is a Zener diode, and there's also a resistor. So you have a Zener regulator circuit, in this case it's a 15 volt, and that is your power supply for the entire circuit. So if your toaster is set up a similar way, and you may have a capacitor here to limit the current, instead of resistors, it'll still work the same way. What you could do to make sure you have the voltage is take a DC voltage reading off of the two leads going to this capacitor. You should see a DC voltage there. Now in this case, this is a 15 volt Zener. So if you take a voltage reading right where the black line is on the diode, where that lead is, to the negative on the capacitor, in this case, I would see the rating of the diode, which is 15 volts. 
that would confirm the power supply is not an issue. Now what determines how long the heating elements stay on inside the toaster is this thermistor right here. The thermistor monitors the air temperature which is in close proximity to the slots where the heating wire is located. So if you put this to a high setting it's going to take a higher temperature in the cavity here to get this thermistor to trigger to turn off the circuit and allow the toaster to pop back up. So once this is pushed in power supplies to the circuit and the entire circuits turned on with the heating element. Now the relay contacts there's a normally open and normally closed. Now in this case the way this one's set up the 120 volts goes to the common terminal the normally closed terminal goes to the heating element to complete the circuit to turn on the heat. Once this circuit here reaches the proper temperature it sends power to the relay coil causing the relay to activate opening the circuit. When that happens the electromagnet will no longer have power and this will pop up and now there's no more power supply to this entire board because this wedge is no longer pushing the contacts apart like you see right there. So the operation is very simple. If you notice your toaster is not heating properly, if it's heating too long, or if it's not heating enough, it's very possible that your potentiometer is heavily worn. The way to test that if you think there's a problem, we'll pull this off. Now the way to test if this is faulty or not, you would take one terminal from either side, you put your digital multimeter probe there or there, and the other meter probe would go to right over here, there's a piece of metal, you would touch one to there and one to either leg. And then as you're holding your meter on there, you could set your digital multimeter to say a 100K ohm setting, slowly turn this and make sure that reading is varying on your meter and that it's nice and smooth and that you don't see any dead spots. If there's a dead spot, that's your reason, you'll want to swap out the potentiometer. You can also test the NTC thermistor right here. You could either desolder it or you could just put a couple of wires on the back and you can hook that up to your digital multimeter. Also put that on a 100K setting and you could apply heat with a hairdryer and make sure the value goes higher and lower on your digital multimeter. That would verify that this is not a problem. Now I'm going to remove this board and show you the back of the relay. Alright, this is the back side of the board. Now you can see the relay are these five contacts. You got one, two, three, and the two on each corner here makes the five. Now the one in front of my finger on this corner and the one in that corner there, that is your relay coil. If you get a digital multimeter and put it on a 10 or 20k ohm range, this reading should give you anywhere between 250 ohms and 4000 ohms. Now the 120 volts is switched on and off between this common terminal which is in the middle and each one of these corners. Now in this case the common is connected to the normally closed and when the heat reaches a certain point power supplied to these two pins to activate the relay coil to open the circuit and then this piece right here will pop up when the electromagnet releases completing the toasting cycle. So you could easily verify if your relay is good or bad, take a digital multimeter and put it on a continuity setting, check between the common and this pin, and check between the common and that pin. One should give you continuity and the other should not. Now if you have a problem with your electromagnet that it's not holding the plate down, you could put your digital multimeter on a 20K or 100K setting and just probe these two wires and make sure there is resistance between these two wires. You don't want to have a very, very high reading and you don't want to have a shorted reading. So you want to make sure that's okay. And then you could take one of the wires going to the coil on either side and check from the core of the electromagnet to the wire on a 2 meg or a 20 meg setting to make sure there's no shorting of the enamel wire going to the iron core. If that's okay and you have good resistance across these two wires, you should be good to go with that electromagnet. 
Now the last thing we didn't look at yet, that is the resistive wire. As you can see, that white insulated wire heading in there, that's going to one end of the resistive wire for the heating. And over there is the other one going in. What happens with toasters over time, the resistive wire may develop spots where the resistance may be a little lower than other spots, causing the wire to heat up more and glow red in certain spots and only a very dull red in other spots. Now the only way to correct that would be to replace the resistive wire and it's very easy to get that wire. You could buy it on eBay or many other electronic suppliers online. It's sold by how many ohms per foot the resistance is and the gauge of the wire. Now the resistive wire could be bought in round or as you see here it's a flat thin ribbon that heats up. So you can get either one, just make sure the resistance matches the one working toaster slot, and then you could swap out the other one. Now in order to test the resistive wire that goes between both of the toaster slots, you're going to look on each side. There you can see one entering, and on this side you can see where the other one goes in. You're just going to follow those to your board and do a resistance test between both of those connections. Now in this case, when I check between both of those wires, I get around 30.5 ohms on this side. Now yours should be in that range, a little lower and a little higher is fine. And as it heats up, the resistance will go higher. It starts out at 30 when it's cold, and it can go 3, 400 ohms or higher once it heats up. So now I'm going to check my other side that I'm having the issue on and see what the reading is on that side. So let me take this board off and put this board back. Alright, I took this board off, unscrewed it, folded it down, and I checked the resistance from this side of the resistive wire to that side. And it turns out it's about 8 to 9 ohms higher than the other side that works. So the problem with this toaster is nothing more than just a wire that's really tired and needs to be replaced. So I do have a roll of resistive wire of the same gauge and I will restring the whole middle section which is no big deal. Now if yours does that, more than likely you're going to throw it away. But if your resistive wire has a break in it, you could put a little sleeve over it and crimp the two ends together to repair the break and everything will work fine again. Now while you have everything open, you could also take a look at the resistors. Make sure they're not black in the middle. That means they've been overheated. You'll want to swap them out. Also take a look at the capacitors. Make sure they're not bulging. That's a sign they're getting ready to blow and you want to replace those. And that is about it. You should be able to straighten out your toaster by watching this video. If you have any other questions, feel free to post them in the comments section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching.